Hey, everybody, welcome to Perpetual Motion, a podcast about daily life, wellness, and relationships. I'm Dr. Mo Anderson, and my goal is to help you stress less, produce more, and love the ones you're with. If you're new to my podcast, please subscribe so you'll be notified when I post a new episode. And if you hear something that inspires you or makes you laugh or empowers you, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe. Today, let's talk about how married people can help their single friends like me find Mr. or Mrs. Right. Yeah, you've been wanting to do it. You've been trying to match us up, hook us up. Let's talk about the right way to make that happen. Why are you afraid? I'd rather live like I'm dying than live to die any day. My heart is pure, my soul is safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hot topic. How can I help out my single friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hot topic. How can I help out my poor single friends? Because I want them to be married like me. That's what you seem to be thinking, at least coming from this end of the equation. I have been single since 2002. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm at peace. But people are constantly trying to hook me up with somebody. And I remind them, you know, Paul, Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, the apostles said, I wish that all men were as I am, but each man has his own gift from God. One has this gift. Another has that. Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say it is good for them to stay unmarried as I am. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he told me. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. That's not exactly a rousing endorsement for marriage. And I don't think that's the reason most people get married. At least I hope not that they're burning with passion. But. Uh, I tell you what, something even worse than that is being in a six hour car ride with somebody you can't stand anymore and you're completely miserable. That is way worse than burning in passion. Nothing that a cold shower can take care of. But I want to talk about, you know, forced relationships, because that's what sometimes people are trying to do when they hook us up. They just can't understand that we might be comfortable with our journey. We might be whole within ourselves. So we just got to be paired up, matched up to count to be significant. There's a concept in design and marketing of forced relationships. It's when two or more separate, unrelated things are brought together and combining them brings unexpected patterns. And when I was researching this podcast topic, uh, that came up when I was expecting to read something about forced relationships among individuals, among humans. And when I read that, I was like, yeah, I get that. The first thing that came to mind, I got to be honest, is the Divine Nines Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. If you're not familiar with the Divine Nine and historically black Greek letter organizations, you need to find out because in 1907 at Howard University in Washington, D.C., an enterprising group of women came together to begin the process of forming this organization. And one of them came up with the idea of their organization's colors being pink and green. And now, I mean, anybody who's familiar with uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, with Black Greek Letter Organization, you see pink and green. You think of them, you think of service, scholarship, sophistication. Some of their members, many of their members have gone on to do truly amazing things globally. But as a young youngster, I remember, and I'm a Zeta, I'll just put that out there, I uh have a lot of friends who are AKAs. I'm not hating, hating on them at all. I just remember the first time I saw pink and green when I was, I was pretty young. And I thought, who in the world put that together? I would never have reached into my closets 
uh, as a 12 year old or so at that time and put pink and green together. They seemed so dissimilar. They didn't seem like they would blend or match. And yet, as I became more familiar with AKAs, the women in the organization, the work they were doing in the community, I came to love that particular color combination because it evoked something in me, an emotion uh, based on that admiration of those women and their work and their work. So something unexpected resulted from those unique patterns being put together. And now I see designers, everybody uh, incorporating those colors. Hopefully the, you know, AKAs are getting some royalty or some funds off of that because I've seen it uh, from t-shirts to hats to purses and it's all good. And, And that can work with materials, with fashion, with design. But when we're talking about forced relationships among individuals, among people, it's more that you're being coerced or compelled or obliged to make someone or something yield, to make it fit into a place where it doesn't naturally fit. And as a single person, and we talk a lot about our singleness, which does not mean we're not whole. It just means that we are not paired with another whole person. But as a single person, to have people constantly trying to coerce or compel you to match up, made up, hook up with someone who is completely dissimilar from you is rather unnerving and nerve wracking. Uh, And it's really hard when it's coming from, you know, pastors, good friends, you know, they're well intended because they don't want you burning with passion. I guess smoke is coming off of us or something. But it's like you want to know how to help your single friends find Mr. and Mrs. Right. Just stop. Just stop. (laughs) Don't be a matchmaker. There are people who are paid to do that and they don't have a very good track record. I don't know if you've watched Married at First Sight, but what, like two thirds of those people end up divorced and these are professionals. They've got a sexologist, a spiritual advisor. They've got Dr. Pepper going to their homes, looking in their refrigerators. There is more to it than what you put on a sheet of paper than how you answer some questions to a panel. I mean, we got Match.com, eHarmony, and they have some successes, but it's not foolproof. It's not a hundred percent. There is an element in there that no one can predict. No one can necessarily uh, anticipate. And really, you just can't be honest, you're just annoying your single friends with your will intended effort. Uh, I've had friends, you know, they, the older ones have given up trying now, but I've had newer friends try to connect me with somebody and the, and the things act like I'm a freaking play date, you know, like I'm a little kid. Oh, oh, you'll like him. Um, he's in healthcare too. Okay. Do we have anything else in common? Like I'm a talker. I like talking about diverse subjects. A lot of people, you know, aren't really talkers in terms of diverse and and wide ranging. I want to talk about philosophy one minute. uh, The next minute I'm talking about a documentary that I just saw. And then I want to talk about the crown. And you don't necessarily have to know about everything that I'm talking about, but I need you bringing something to the table in terms of what you've learned, what you've seen, how you've grown. I, you know, just gossip, judgmental, or you can only talk about one thing. There are a lot of folks in their 40s, 50s, and 60s who have narrowed their conversations down to work, politics, and religion. That is all they talk about. That's not a good fit for me. I don't care what kind of health care they're in. I don't care if they have adult children like me and grandchildren. I don't care if we're the same height, weight, size. If we're freaking twins. If 
And, and see, I know these things. This is not something I'm telling my friends. So that's what you got to keep in mind when you're trying to hook people up is that, you know, you know, we've all got different facets to our personality. You know, their friend to you personality. You know what you've observed, maybe what you've seen them do at work. But there are a whole lot of thoughts and feelings and yes, baggage that they're bringing along into their relationship sphere that you might not be aware of. And honestly, I've had a couple of friends that I just, I don't even deal with them anymore because they were just so insistent on, you know, trying to match me with people with these subversive tactics. Y'all don't have a dinner party and your single friend gets there and there's all these coupled up people and just one other single guy who happens to be sitting by your single girlfriend. You can have these dinners. You can put people together, but give us a heads up. We don't like it. We don't like it. And yes, I'm speaking for all of us. Don't surprise me, especially boomers like me. Come on now. And I might have worn something different had I known that this forced relationship attempt was happening tonight. So, I mean, you think about how you met the person you're with, married people. Some of you, a few of you, yeah, had an instant attraction. Awesome. First time you met, you knew that was the one. But most of you, and most of my friends are married, so I know this, it took some time to develop that relationship to go through what we have in common to have some experiences to build some trust to build loyalty uh, to talk about our values man that's critical you know it, it don't just try to hook somebody up with someone and and you don't know their values i mean that's that's not something that that's a red flag right there you know because uh, i'm a magnet for people who uh, exaggerate and manipulate things. We all lie, so I'm not going to call them liars statistically. I say this all the time. We all lie. We know we do. It might be little things. It might be big things. But people who just simply cannot tell the truth, that's not going to be a good fit for your friend who is just really into honesty and, and transparency at all. So if you, you know, you want to be... A good friend, first of all, don't feel sorry for your single friends. Singleness is a gift. It may be a time in your life. It may be your lot in life. But single people are not asking you to look upon us with pity or feel sorry for us. Okay, yeah, when it snowed and I was like stuck at home by myself. Yeah, you I feel sorry for everybody, but you could particularly feel sorry for me at that time. But that was three days. I'm over it. So you have your moments. But overall, it's not a state to be pitied. Biblically speaking and practically speaking as someone who's very, very knowledgeable about knowledgeable about it. Like today, I've been working on podcasts for three or four hours. I ate cheese toast for breakfast. I had a smoothie. I'm good. I'm good. This is how I want to spend my Sunday. This is where I am in my life. I am like super happy with this. So I'm going to ask you to dial back on the judgment of how a person has to be spending their time and who they have to be spending their time with to feel fulfilled and to feel happy and to feel at peace. I mean, goodness, look at the divorce rate right now. It has gone up during the period of stay at home during the pandemic. Yeah, you see a lot of people getting married, but look at the stats. A lot of people are realizing that what they like most about their marriage was their job that took them away from the house. I mean, that's that's a tough thing. Uh, and then others uh, grew more intimate, grew in the intensity of their emotions for their significant others. They supported each other through this challenging time. So you just never know what being with another person in a really focused and forced way, particularly in that case, is going to bring. But if I can really, really share the most important thing about this topic for this podcast is not how to fix up your single friend 
so that they're booed up, bait up, whatever term you like to use. Here's what you can do as a married person to be a good friend to your single friend. That's really a much more critical role you can play for us. One is affirm our friendship by being consistent, communicating with me, doing things with me that are not strictly based on your relationship status. Don't be that person. And I hear men complain about this, single men and women. Don't be that person like like the go to when you don't have anything else in your life to do or you're angry with your spouse. Then I hear from you, you know, and the rest of the time I don't. I don't hear from you. Don't invite me to do anything. Don't have any time to spend with me. Yeah, we get that you married. Get that we're single and we have interests and we have things going on in our life as well. But friendships are built around intentionality, intentionally choosing to spend time with one another. So if you've got a single sister, single mom, single friend, make that a priority to spend time with them. Just as you make all other things that you spend time with and on a priority. So affirm me in that way that I'm important all the time, not just when you're bored or upset about something. Two, listen when your single friend is talking about their single issues. Listen without trying to fix it, without judging it, and without feeling the need to start telling us how much worse it is with your marital woes. We just want you to listen. We just want you to listen. It's not a competition. It's just a friend talking to a friend. It's not asking you for therapy. You know, that's your chance to uplift and empower us. We're having a tough time, and it's not always because we're single. Bad things just happen in life sometimes. Things break. You know, you can be with people and be lonely, be down, be depressed. Just listen and hear us. Give us feedback. Affirm us. You ain't got to fix it. Okay? Remind your single friends, number three, remind your single friends of the importance of self-care and me time. This this was interesting to me when I became single was that I would thought I'd have, I thought I'd have all this free time, right? I can just do whatever I want all day long. But I am busier than ever and because they're not things to pull you away I want to call them distractions because you know family extended or otherwise are not distractions but there are things that pull on you and make you use your time uh, in a particular way to be more efficient if I'm being honest because you know at five o'clock you got to quit and go fix dinner or you got to go to this practice for so-and-so or this play or show up but I have all day all weekend sometimes where I would would and have I don't anymore, but I could literally just work, 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 work. Was that Rihanna? Work, 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 work. I know I'm off on the beat, but remind your single friends of the importance of getting that exercise in, not binging on uh Netflix all day long if you get the impression that that's all they're doing because <laughs> it's possible it's easy to do and uh me time because the other thing is people everybody just starts putting everything on you you know hey can you do this for me can you run by do you mind can you watch can you handle a uh, sister can you volunteer for that oh I need your advice it's like you know, if, if people just think you don't have anything going on, you don't have anything else to do. It's, it's, it's that broad. It's those two extremes. So remind us, hey, take care of yourself. When's the last time you got a massage? Are you eating okay? Because you look at my refrigerator right now. Oh, my goodness. I think there's some lemonade and some biscuits. It's, it's sad. But I'm going to the store later today because a friend reminded me even offered to get me a freshly uh subscription because we were talking on the phone and she you know we were doing a video call she got a glimpse into my refrigerator so yeah just adding that in and number four when i do or when your single friend does get connected with someone right and 
you've known them a while. You've seen them date different people. You know their kind. You've seen them go through a few things. And you've seen what their uh, proclivities are in terms of not always making the best choices. If they ask you, they're dating this new guy and right away you can see that they are looking at his shiny shoes and wavy hair and totally missing a really huge red flag like the fact that they have no idea where he lives or what he does for a living uh, vagueness like that or whatever it is you are in the perfect position as a good friend longtime friend to be honest about the red flags. Now, I know you don't want them to get angry with you and they may not even listen. And this is only if they ask, caveat, if they ask you, if they don't, hey, it's on them. Just be there, you know, as a net when they fall. But if they ask, be honest. You don't have to be mean about it. You don't have to go on and on. But if there's something you see that you find concerning, go ahead and tell them. Because even worse than that, more painful, more hurtful than that honesty from a good friend. If you're a good friend, I can handle it. And you can handle honesty from me is when you tell me after we break up and I'm hurt and melting down and then I'm not trying to hear I didn't like him when I met him. I never liked him. I knew he wasn't right for you. I didn't know the way he talked to you. I I didn't like the way he talked to you. Come on now. You could have told me that. Because it's my good friend. You're going to plant a seed in some fertile ground. It might not just sprout that day. I might not kick somebody to the curb. You know. But I might just start thinking about. You know. In some of my relationship development areas of my brain. Okay. Let's review. Renew, renew. Am I repeating mistakes for of the past? Is my friend mis, you know, is my friend mistaken? Uh, is there a potential here? Uh, do I just keep putting the same things in my basket? Three for one. Not cans are not gonna work. Big cans of not gonna work. High cholesterol, high sugar. Nothing new of nutritional value. It just looks good and tastes good. Don't need any more of those. Need things that are going to be good to me and good for me. So we need you married friends. We do. And you need us single friends because we're going to give you some perspectives too. When you get down and out and complaining about your relationship and you know you do. You don't want to say you don't want to say it out loud, but you're nodding. You know you do. Everybody, I mean, that's life. Shoot. Living with a whole human being who had different parents, a different upbringing, different experiences, different schooling. Yeah, there's going to be areas where we don't completely fit like puzzle pieces. And as single friends, we can help you fill in those gaps. And remember, what really matters is the big picture the final picture and when you're looking at the comprehensive overview you see the beauty you don't see the fractures the gaps the cracks you see the beauty of the mosaic of humankind so we can all get along and get along stay in our lanes but move in the same direction with love with affection and with accountability, as long as we're not forcing relationships on each other. Can't we all just get along? Is that great Negro philosopher once said, Mr. Rodney King? Can't we all just get along? I think we can. And I thank you. For listening to Perpetual Motion with Dr. Mo Anderson. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Visit my website at drmoanderson.com for more about my books and workshops or to schedule me to speak at your next event. I am fire on the microphone. Subscribe, like, leave a rating, depending on what platform you're on. 
And if you share this episode to social media, remember to tag me at Dr. Mo Anderson. Now go, renew, review, and review. Thank you.